hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. There we go. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord? The first Sunday of 2021. Why don't we put our hands together and let's magnify His name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new year. Another opportunity, God, to serve you, to lift up your name, to exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We have a number of needs on our prayer list today, people that are asking us to pray on their behalf. And if you have a special need in your life, we invite you to come forward this morning. We'll anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith over you. Let's go before the throne room of grace right now. Loving Master, God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we love and appreciate you. God, we ask that you would touch every name that is on the screens this morning. Minister to them in a mighty and a powerful way. God, we pray for the families that are represented here today, that you would be a strength and a blessing to them. God, give us hope and inspiration in this brand new year. In the name of Jesus, we pray. One more time, can you put your hands together? Let's magnify his name. Worship with our praise team as they sing. On you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. been so, so good. So good. He's not only a Savior, He's not only a Messiah, but He is our friend. He is our faithful Father. What a wonderful song to open up for 2021. God is good. So happy to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. Church, won't you take a moment, show yourself friendly. Thank you guests for being a part of our service today. to direct your attention to the screens for the announcements and you can be seated if you would like. Tonight we do have our first responders class and that begins at 530 in room 120. This is for ages 10 to 15 years old and this class is specifically designed to teach our children the spiritual disciplines of prayer and worship and uh, to engage them in the church at a very young age. So if you would like for your children to be a part of that, have them here at 530 in room 120. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and we're having our youth and hyphen activities outside after church service tonight, and that will go until 10 o'clock. Wednesday night Bible study classes will begin this Wednesday, and uh, you can see the schedule up there. This is going to be a different, uh, different routine for what we normally have. We normally have our Wednesday night worship service, but uh, we will be splitting up for our Wednesday night Bible study classes beginning this Wednesday. 
And we'll have Pug, uh, Puggles, ages 2 to 3, and Worm 101. Children's uh, Church, ages 4 to 11, that will be in the Fellowship Hall. Junior High class, ages 12 to 13, that will be upstairs in room 200. High school class, ages four, 14 to 18, that will be in room 120. That is different from where you are normally used to meeting. That is going to be on that side of the building, high school students. Hyphen class, you'll be meeting in your regular location. That's ages 18 to 30, room 103. Life class, that's the adults, will be meeting right here in the sanctuary. And we will continue with our grief and loss class. And that will be meeting in room 133. That is a different location than what you have been meeting in. That is in the far end of the building, down the hallway, very last class on the left. Greater Things Conference. Mark your calendars right now. It's going to be an awesome time. That is Friday, uh, January 22nd, Saturday, January 23rd, and Sunday, January 24th. Special speakers will include Mark Brown, Jonathan McDonald, and Wayne Huntley. I promise you it's going to be an awesome time. And make sure that you are here. Put it on your calendar. Invite your friends and your family. It is going to be incredible. Hyphen, you will be meeting on January 14th at 7.30 in the church kitchen. We'll be serving light, light refreshments and snacks, followed by split uh, Bible study sessions. And you can see Group Me for more details on that. Why don't we all stand at this time, asking the ushers to come forward with our missions offering. This is the first Sunday of the month where we do recognize and uh, give specifically to those missionaries working in foreign fields. The ushers are going to put the plates up here in the altar with a newsletter. So as you put your offering in, you can grab a newsletter. Remember to pray for that missionary throughout the month. Uh, we support a number of foreign missionaries, and uh, your offering goes towards uh, helping them and their work that they do in foreign grounds. Why don't we take a moment and pray as all of our ushers come forward. We will receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings at the same time. If you would like to give, you get to wave at the usher. They'll bring the bag directly to you. Or you can do text to give at 832-957-9201. You can also give to missions through text just by simply typing in your dollar amount and the word missions after it. And it will go directly to the missions fund. Or you can give online at porterabc.org. Thank you, loving master, for the opportunity to be in your house today as we give our tithes and our offerings, Lord. We pray that you would multiply many times for your kingdom. God, we also pray for all of our missionaries that are serving across the globe, that you would be with them, help them to find favor in every work that they are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody say amen.
when he said forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward he wasn't talking about losing a remembrance of all that God had brought you from amen I, boy I'm thankful I, I see some people I can tell they forgot because I remember when it first happened and boy they acted a lot different when they first were delivered from some things than, than they do now and I just figured you know at some point they forgot Man, I was sitting somewhere the other day, and my brother, anytime I ride with him, and Brother Whitehurst, he's preaching out this morning. He has the same issue. Anytime I ride with them, they try to wait till I'm not paying attention. They turn the seat heaters all the way on. And then I'm like, man, I, so, something's going on. I don't know. <laughs> and then I realize that they've got everything turned up. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Boy, you can get frustrated with that. I'm like, man, I forget. I remember when I was the last one to leave the restaurant because anytime I'd start my car, it was, and I'm, people, you know, you're just waiting around. People think you're being friendly. You're like, no, I'm just too embarrassed to start my car while I'm in the parking lot with anybody I know. Oh, my goodness. Some of you are like, I'm just, man, I remember when I didn't have a car. I just wanted a good bicycle. I wanted one of those, you know, he put a little, put one of those cards in the wheel spokes. It sounded a little bit like, like a motorcycle. But uh, God's been good to us. Whatever you're going through, God's been good to you. Amen. And I don't ever want to forget where he's brought me from. So great to see everybody this morning. I know we still got many, many out uh, coming in from vacation, different things. That's all right. So wonderful starting to see everybody starting to come back. Looking forward to the day that everybody makes it home and getting through the holidays, glad everybody made it through safely, but uh, we're excited, we're excited to see everybody, glad that God is moving, thankful for everything we're seeing, and we're going to go into the word of the Lord this morning, uh, starting in Philippians chapter 4, and we'll go down to verse 13, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, amen, amen. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody tonight. Remember, we will, t- we will be taking communion tonight and uh, having a time uh, of consecration. going to start the year off right. Amen. And so, you know, we're, gonna, we're ending some things. I, I was deer hunting. I know that's hard to imagine. No, it's, it's not at all. I tell people I have one hobby. and uh, But I was at a place, and I... I there was a buck that I, I had taken, and I was like, man, this is a lot bigger than what I thought would be in this area. And he told me, he said, well, he said, way back in the, uh, in the 30s and 40s, there was the Dust Bowl. This was the Dust Bowl, and that was when they had all the drought and the dust storms and everything, and it killed everything, and it killed all of the deer in the panhandle. So what they did is they brought deer down from Kansas, well, they look a lot different than what we're used to. And so they're just massive animals. And he told me, he said, yes, he said, actually, he said, now you can get fined. If you plow your field over and you don't plant anything, you can get fined. Because if there's nothing planted, then there's nothing that keeps the dust from coming in or the wind from coming in and just taking that dust and throwing it all over because of the high winds in the area. But if you leave something planted, it holds everything together. I thought, you know what, how, how, how much is that like us so many times? We got no problem having a time of repentance. We have no problem going to an altar. The problem is we get everything cleaned out and nothing is planted. Nothing takes root. And then we find ourselves in the same situation just a little while later, the scripture says, you know, if the house is cleaned out, the spirit leaves. 
and it comes back to find nothing has filled that void, it returns with seven even worse than it. And so I don't just want to repent. I don't just want God to cleanse me. I want Him to fill me. What, I don't just want Him to take my addiction. I want Him to fill it with consecration for Him. I don't want Him to just take my unfaithfulness. I want Him to fill me with faithfulness. I want something in my life to change this year like never before. Amen? Amen. You don't want to miss tonight. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 and we've all known this. You could probably quote it by heart. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Lord Jesus, we love you this morning. We are so thankful to be once again in your presence, to come together as a body, Lord, to lift you up, to be encouraged by your word and by your spirit. I ask that you would speak to every person in here this morning, all those watching and listening online. I ask that you would touch every single heart, every mind that we may leave here change because of what you do in our lives this morning. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you've already done and for what you are going to do. And everyone said amen. Amen. Give someone next to you your biggest smile. Now, if they got something in their teeth, let them know. Amen. And you may be seated. Boy, you look good this morning. You really tell you really spent some time, you know. It's good. I didn't spend as much time as I probably should have. Uh, I'm not sure where I left this jacket, but apparently... um, it wasn't supposed to be polka dotted, but it is for some reason. I just noticed. So um, if you're sitting there thinking, huh, man, he's struggling this morning. That's ah, all right. I struggle most mornings. It'll be fine. Uh, you know, some days you got it all together, and some days you're just like, listen, I'm here. I won. I won today. I'm, I'm here. I made it. Nobody died. I didn't run anybody off the road. Look, my children aren't dressed, but they're here. They're alive. God is good. Amen. Some, some days it's like that. But even on those days, God is good. This scripture right here is an, an amazing scripture because you can apply it to everything in your life. Doesn't matter what you're going through. This is the scripture we throw out at almost everything. You know, well, there's pain in my body. I don't know how I can make it. Well, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Well, I don't know if I can beat this addiction. Well, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yes, we can do all things through Christ. But there are some things that come with that. And I want to take a little while this morning on on a thought. And I'm not going to finish all of it. I'll finish the rest of it tonight. But we'll, we'll get into it this morning. And I'd like just to take a little while on what uh, I would title between here and there. Between here and there. Well, well, between here and there what? Between where I am and where I want to be. Or rather what I should say, where God wants me to be. There's some things that need to take place. It, it's easy to say the scripture, but, but it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get in our heart. And there's some things that begin to change in us. And so there's a couple of things. If you want to see a change in your life, if we want to see God do something, there are some things that have to take place. There are some things that God has shown us in His Word. You know, directions are wonderful. I mean, as men, we don't need them, you know. We have, I don't even know why they put those in there. Did you ever put something together and it had spare parts, but it it wasn't actually supposed to have spare parts? I put a weed eater together once, and I had quite a few washers and things left over. I thought, oh, that's awesome. It came with spare parts. Someone else got the same one. Theirs didn't have any spare parts. Theirs also worked. Um, I had to borrow theirs to come to my mine looked fine. It just it just didn't do anything. It, it, you know, it's kind of like some people's walk with God. It looks pretty on the outside. It just it don't really do anything. It's not really where you're gonna go for prayer. It's not re- you know, some people they're like, hey, I'm praying for you, and you're like, yes, <laughs> they're praying for some people are like, oh, I'm praying for you. Like, okay, where's we're so-and-so. I need to add to that one. It looks okay on the outside. There's just not a whole lot going on. But the directions do matter. You know, and I think I learned this as a child. My parents would get me Legos. And while the picture on the box really was amazing, and it really could have been something. In fact, my dad, because I had a tendency to tear down everything we built and build it 
uh, quite a bit different than it was supposed to be. Castles didn't look like castles. Planes didn't have wings. It, it never turned out. So when I would put them together, my dad would put super glue on them so that I wouldn't destroy them. Or he thought it would not destroy them. Turns out that was not enough either. And apparently William has taken after me, my the second son. You know, I think he is very insistent on letting everybody know I'm just barely younger, 45 seconds. But I, I come in the other day, and he's like, Daddy, this thing doesn't work. It's stupid. I'm like, boy, that Lego's really, what, what, what's going on? This doesn't work. It's not even supposed to look like this. I'm like, well, you know, there's a little thing called the directions, and you can follow them page by page. Like, yeah, they're over there. I'm like, well, why don't we get those, and if we follow this, you know, line by line, we can get this thing built. He's like, oh, okay. So we started going through. He's like, yeah, I didn't do it like that. I'm like, I know, but we can. Isn't that just like, we're like, oh, my goodness, how did he not know that? That's what I want to tell people sometimes. How did you not know that? There's some di- directions. That, this whole book is literally a guide to how to get to heaven, how to please God, how to live a life that is pleasing pleasing to him. And some people are like, yeah, I got one. I got five of them. I mean, they're they're really nice. I got one that's never been read. It's really cool. It's an heirloom. I'm going to pass it down to somebody. Uh, But this, uh, this book leads us and it guides us. It does a whole lot more leading and guiding if we allow it to get into any area of our lives. It does a whole lot better that way. But so I started looking. I was like, what are some of the steps? What are some of the things that, that happen on our way to becoming who God wants us to be. Because believe it or not, regardless of where you are, even though some of you in this place, you may feel like, I, my, my future's done, I've messed up too many times, I've done this, I've done that. that. That's a lie. That's a trick of the enemy. That, that's, that's just the devil trying to get you discouraged and everything else. Let me tell you something. There are no accidents in this room. You may have had some accidents and made some mistakes, but you are not an accident. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, regardless of what you've gone through and where you are today. God has His hand on you. God has a plan for your life that existed before your first breath was taken. But just because God has a plan does not necessarily mean that that plan will happen. You know, you have this school of thought that says, well, God's will will be done. Well, the Scripture says pray that His will will be done because there's an opposing will to His will called my will. That's why He taught us to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. There'd be no reason to pray thy will be done if thy will was automatic. But my will can get in the way of His will. And so these are just some things that help us get to where God wants us to be. The very first one is actually a pretty easy one. You've read this many, many times, I'm quite positive. And that's in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. He that keepeth the law, happy is he. The first thing you've got to have is a dream. The first thing you have to have is a vision of where you want to be. There's a place I want to go. I've never known anybody to get anywhere in their walk with God that was like, you know, wherever it ends up, it's fine. Maybe I'll make it. Maybe I won't. No, no, no. You've got to start it with this. Hey, there, there's something I've got. I've got a dream from God. I've got a vision. I, I see myself. I don't pray the way I feel like I need to be praying, but I've got a vision of where I can be. I've got a vision of what my family can look like, the kind of man I can be, the kind of family we can be, the kind of prayer life I can have. If, if you can get that vision, the Bible says without it, we perish. And so we, we have that. Number one, you have to have that, that you're trying to reach towards. But it doesn't matter a whole lot if you don't have desire. Desire is, is such a difference maker. It, it all, makes all the difference in the world when you want something. John chapter 2 and verse 17, he said, And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. He said, I I want it. There's there's just some things that I absolutely want. There's some things that are desired. There is no substitute for desire. You want to know the hard thing about being a pastor is I have learned you can't make people want what they don't want. 
uh, you, you, they've got all the books on how to manipulate, but that, that's, not, that's not how it works. You've got to want it. If someone has to manipulate you to go to heaven, that's going to be a problem. Desire is what makes the difference. And I have learned by the word that desire happens by delighting in him. We all have desires. One scripture that we take uh, for granted and we get it all mixed up. Anybody ever read the scripture, delight thyself also in the Lord? He will give you the desires of your heart. You're like, I'm going to delight myself into a Dodge Viper and a three-story home. And, man, this is going to be awesome. I'm just, that's the desire of my heart. So I'm just going to love God, and he's going to give me those things. But that's not what that scripture means. Delight thyself in him, and he'll give you the desires that you ought to have. He said, my desires are going to become your desires. You're going to start one. Okay, let me see. I think she's in a class or she's outside. I, you know, I always get in trouble when I tell my stories and my wife's sitting over there, you know, and you, it really puts me in a spot. But I'm going to tell you, the longer I'm married, there's some things I have to be honest. I did not want to do when I got, I mean, I know there are guys out there. I know you're out there. You're very rare, and you rub it in all of our faces. You wake up every morning and look through your phone for a poem that you can read to your wife that day because you're awesome. We know the rest of us are struggling sometimes to get through the day. I know that there are some that you got it all together, but a majority of the time we take it for granted. I mean, I got the best one out there. I mean, she's amazing, but I still, I didn't even know what I got when I got her. Thank well, Sister Mary. Thank you, Sister Mary, for your vote of confidence. Sister Mary recognizes that uh, I was, I did good, didn't I, Sister Mary? I did. She's awesome. Number one, that's right. But the longer I've been married, the more that I get to know her, the more I, I realize how awesome she is. There are things that I want to do that have less to do with what's in it for me and more of letting her know how much she means to me. When you first start living for God, it, it seems like it, every, at every turn someone's trying to tell you why you need to live this way and why you ought to live this way. and that. But the longer I live for God, my reason is not what you think I ought to do. My reason is I want to please God. My desire has changed. I want to do this because it's pleasing to him. Not so I can get in the choir. Not so I can do this. Not so I, no, no. I want him to be pleased with my life. He said, if you'll delight yourself in me, you're going to start finding that your desires match my desires. You're going to start wanting to be in my presence. You're going to want to live this way and act that way, not because someone's forcing you, but because that's how his spirit works. If you find yourself having lived for God, we can say lived for God or attended church and all that for a long time, and you still struggle with living a life that is pleasing to God and living according to the Word of God, somewhere along the way there was a connection and a relationship with Jesus Christ that didn't happen because there shouldn't be, it shouldn't be forced and it shouldn't have to be manipulated or threatened. This should be something that if my walk with God is healthy and if my knowledge of God is growing, if I'm spending time with him and I've been in prayer with him it's not something you have to talk me into doing it's something I want to do I want to please him I, I, I've become I've become more and more acquainted with him to the fact that man there's nobody that's ever treated me like he has I want to please him I want him to be proud of me I want him to know how much I love him it won't last if it's manipulated it won't work like that. Now, now, a lot of churches have tried that. We can just park here for just a little bit. Not long. I mean, just, you know, may spend a the night. There are a lot of buildings that are growing, but not necessarily a church. I've told this before. People are like, well, it's not about numbers. Well, God does care. I mean, every number of every person that's... One is the number of another person that's not lost or going to hell. So, yes, no, he literally had an entire book called Numbers. Yes, numbers matter. It may not be the focus, but it matters. And so, but you begin to look at this, and 
I've seen so many. I've had, I've had people call me like, listen, Pastor, you can double. You can double this year. Now, what you need to do is you need to have this social and that social and this thing. And if you can get this group and that group and that group. And, and if you can get it. And, and I notice nothing in there is more the word. Nothing in there is more prayer. Nothing in there is more time of worship. Nothing. I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we got to get some things right. There, there is something. I don't know that it's spiritual. But, I mean, somebody's doing something right. There's this little bitty place called Bucky's. Anybody ever been there? That sounds like somebody that's been to Bucky's. Listen, if I am going to make a stop anywhere where there's a Bucky's, I will get just enough gas to where I know I need to stop when I get close to Bucky. I just need an excuse to go in and to walk past the jerky aisle because, you, you know, and then I'm like, well, you know, there's not a Bucky's within five miles of me, so I really need to stock up. And with COVID and, you know, it could be the end time, I probably should fill up a couple of bags of jerky you know and you you know the jerky that's for when days are tough for right now we probably need to get a brisket sandwich because man and then they got those really nice coolers that you know you got to put the jerky in to keep safe I mean they're right there and while you're sitting there you don't want to just you know have to lean over and load up the cooler they've got the coolest fold out chairs that help you while you're it never ends. I have been late to trips because of one place, Bucky's. You have to when I evangelized, Bucky's was like is like God made that just for us. Clean restrooms, food, gas, it's everything. It's like he provided a way in the middle of the desert. But I asked someone, I I have a friend of mine that owns a gas station told me he said do you know how much we make now granted this has been a, a few years ago this has probably been about five years ago he said do you know how much I, told him, I said why don't you drop the price of gas why don't it'll get more people coming he said do you know how much we make on a gallon of gas i was like i don't know a dollar he said we make anywhere from two to three cents a gallon profit he said, when you buy that pack of bottled water, I make more on that pack of bottled water than what I make on you filling up your vehicle. We had a place we used to, when we were deer hunting there in Zavala. They had a place, great, bur- great burgers, great uh, curly fries. I mean, uh, all this amazing stuff. And it had a little gas station. So we'd fuel up there, and then we'd go in. We'd get a burger. We'd get the fries. We'd get honey buns, chocolate milk, all this stuff for the deer stand and everything. And then one day they decided, you know what? We, we make a pretty good burger. We, we got a pretty good operation here. We don't make a lot of money off the fuel. We're not going to do that anymore. So they quit selling gas. We started driving past it. They did make a good burger. And they did have a nice store. But the number one reason we stopped was to get fuel. It wasn't the thing we liked the most about it, but it was the thing that gave us a reason to stop. And so one of the spokesperson was talking, and even with Bucky's, he said, make no mistake. He said, there's not a lot of money to be made in, in, in the fuel part, but it's the reason that everybody stops. And you cannot forget that this is the main thing. And the worst thing that can happen to a church, the worst thing that can happen to us, hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with having a good program. There's nothing wrong. I love the stuff we do for our youth. I love the hyphen groups. I love everything we do. And I'll tell you like I tell the whole youth team, hey, we can have fun. We can play basketball and volleyball. But the number one thing is that our young people know what it feels like to walk out of the presence of God and know that, man, something happened. God got a hold of me. I don't care how good you can play basketball. I don't care how much you like volleyball. I don't care how many campfires with s'mores. None of that matters. If you don't know what it's like to be in the presence of God and you don't have an understanding of what God wants to do in your life, the rest is all good, but it's not the main thing.
the difference in us and, and Bucky's and them, they actually got into a lawsuit some years ago. I remember reading about it. And in order to get business, they dropped the price of gas below what it actually cost them. They were actually taking a loss on fuel prices so that they could get people into the store because that's where they made their money on everything. The difference in us and them is we cannot drop anything that comes to the things of God in order to win anybody or we've lost it. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is to be saved. The main thing is to know God. The main thing is to have an understanding and a relationship with Him. What are you saying? Boy, you're all over. What I'm telling you is the number one thing we've got to have right now is a desire. That's what I want to get a hold of us this year like never before. A desire to see Him and to know Him like we've never known before. I've always went to church, but that's not enough anymore. There are people who are going to be lost and they've never missed a service. There are people that on the outside look like they were born on a pew and they've never missed, but there's junk on the inside that is so wrong and so rotten that the outside ain't good enough to make up with what's wrong on the inside. But this year, let it get in our hearts. Hey, I want to see Him. I want to please Him. I want to feel His presence like I've never felt before. It ain't just about coming to church so I can say I was at church. No. I want to know that every time I walk in this building, I'm looking for Him. Why are you the prayer room because from the moment I walk in to the moment I leave I'm not going to miss an altar call I'm not going to miss a song I'm not going to miss a sermon I'm not going to miss a scripture why because I want to oh I want to see him to look upon his face oh I want to see him I want to know him for myself I want to know all that he wants to do in my life I'm not sad. Is there anybody not satisfied? Is there anybody that can look over your life and say, you know what? If I'm honest, Pastor, I, I've been in church a long time, but it's been a long time since I got any closer than I've been in a long time. Not a lot's changed in the last, I've been in church 50 years and the last 20 years hadn't changed. Oh boy. I'm going to get in so much trouble. Bishop, will you get me out of it? Oh good. I'm okay then. We got to quit looking in the mirror, and because everything matches what it's supposed to in the mirror, we give ourselves a pass for what doesn't match on the inside. Hey, let me tell you something. It's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Some of us learn to skip a process. We got the outside, and we just ignore the inside. My attitude matters. My heart matters. What's in my mind matters. My thoughts matter. My words, who you are on social media matters. Get off of it and your life will really matter. My, listen, I know I'm on it. I loathe it. I hate it. Unfortunately, it's how I can get a hold of most of the people I talk to. This year's got to be different. It's too close to play games. Oh, I've told you before, the worst thing we can ever do is live our life in comparison to one another. Give, well, they're, they're doing this and they're doing that, so I guess I'm all right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're not going to stand up there with you, when we make it. We stand before that throne of judgment. They're not going to stand you up next to anybody in this building and say, okay, now let's see how you compare to them. They're not even going to call me up and say, okay, let's see how you compare to your pastor. They're not even going to bring Bishop up and stand him up and say, let's see how you compare to him. No, 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 no. I'm going to stand up next to him. And he's going to say, okay. Let's see how you compare to me. Let's see how you compare. To, yeah, but I did so much better. Oh, no, 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 no. That doesn't matter. Oh, I want to please him. I want my life to be pleasing to him. When he looks in my life, I, God, search my attitude. Search my motives. Not just what I do, but why I do it. Oh, God. Give me. Mm-mm-mm. I can't back down. 
you can't back down. It's time. Hey, you know what? There's so many things that are a blessing to our life as a byproduct of living for him. But I can never allow the side benefits to ever become the priority. It's still all about him. Well, they're not having that class that I wanted. I guess I'm going to leave. Then it ain't all about him. Oh, well, that wasn't my color. of the. I thought we were going to paint the walls another color. I told them what I thought it would look good, and I thought pink with white stripes was really, I'm sorry, we didn't want to look like a peppermint. But if that's the issue, it's not all about him. It has to be all about him. God, I don't care what it takes. It's all about you. I just want to get a hold of you. What what, what do I do? I got that desire. Desire without a decision and a made-up mind doesn't matter. Everybody has desires. I'd like to be able to dunk. And I don't mean it's Shipley's Donuts. Even though if I'm honest, that wouldn't hurt my feelings either. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to go, number one, I don't, know that, I don't know that there's enough exercise to do to get this big boy off the ground that high. But either way, what I don't want to do is to do an awful diet and go to the gym every day and have to do this exercise. And that. Why? Because that's not worth it enough for me. Yeah, it's a great desire. Hey, it'd be nice. There's a lot of things that we may like to do, but the desire is not accompanied by a decision to do it. Therefore, it's just something, hey, yeah, I'd like for that to happen. I want to live for God. I just haven't made a decision to live for God. I want God to rule in my life. I just, I don't make any decisions that go along with that. A decision, a made-up mind. It's one of the greatest things that you can ever have with your walk with God. One of the greatest things that will make sure that you make it to heaven is a made-up mind. Musicians, you can get ready. I've said it before. I'll probably say it many other times. Abraham Lincoln, when he became president, what they would do is, the, the story I read was that when a man would become president, they had a shoe cobbler that would go up and he would make the president a, a new pair of shoes. And so he went up to him, and he, he got the size of his foot. He got the width. He got all that. And uh, he asked him, he said, uh, Mr. President, I, I'll be working on them. Would you like a round toe or a square toe? He, and President Lincoln told him, he said, well, I'll, uh, I'll get with you on that. He said, yes, sir. He said, so two months went by, and he checked back in with him. He said, Mr. President, the shoes are done. I just, or, or I, I need to finish the end of them, but I need to know, do you want a square toe or a rounded toe? He said, oh, you know what, can I get right back with you? He was really busy that day. A few weeks later, a box showed up for President Lincoln, and inside were his new shoes, and one had a square toe, And one had a rounded toe. And it had a note attached to it that said, Mr. President, if you do not make up your mind, somebody will make it for you. Some of us, while we are waiting to make up our mind on whether we're going to live for God or not, circumstances and things in our life are making up our mind for us. While I'm making up my mind on whether I'm going to raise my family to live for God, the world I live in is making that decision for me. While I'm making up my mind on what kind of marriage I'm going to have, the world I'm living in is making up that decision for me. While I'm making up my mind whether I'm going to give God everything or not, the world is moving by and And little do I realize that not making a decision is making a decision. Make up your mind. I'm going to live for God. It don't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it. It doesn't matter if it makes me popular, if it makes me unpopular. It doesn't matter. I've got to make a decision. And the problem is there's so many that can't seem to make a decision. Joel chapter 3 and verse 14 says, Multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision said there are all kinds of people in the valley of decision waiting to make a decision not sure where they're going to go not sure what they're going to do whatever happened to making up your mind I remember when I was a kid 
all uh, Texaco used to give out these really nice Rolexes if you worked till retirement. Or you put in so many years. I remember we had men all in my dad's church there in Port Arthur. And a lot of them had these, these watches. that were, Some of them wore them. Some of them had them in cases. But that was their gift from the refinery for putting in all those years. And used to, what they would tell you is, hey, go work for this company. You'll never need another job. And that's what they did. That doesn't happen a lot anymore. Now you don't know where you're going to work. I mean, you, you've got eight jobs and eight months, and it, it, it don't seem like there's any loyalty anymore, and that goes both ways. Sometimes it's with companies. Sometimes it's with employees. It, it doesn't matter. But there was a time when you made a decision, and that's just what it was. You say, I do. It's forever. You give your life to God. It's forever. But we are living in the valley of indecision. All around us, there are plenty of voices saying, oh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to live like that. There's another option. we got so many options. But we're not ever going to get where God's called us to be until we make up our mind. It don't matter what the world has to offer. It doesn't matter what's around the corner. I'm going to live for God no matter what, no matter who, no matter what comes, no matter what tomorrow brings. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And then, of course, the one we all know and probably can quote it by heart in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. i got to have a made-up mind. Nothing else matters if, I, if I'm open for any other direction that comes my way. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let me tell you something. There's some things I like Bucky's. The only reason I don't use the word love is because Scripture says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love of the Father is not in him. Otherwise, I'd say I love Bucky's. But if they quit having the cleanest restrooms, eh, that's going to have a little bit of effect because I got all these kids. If it turns out they, you know, the, the, the barbecue... Be- well, that's actually not true. If even if they sold corn dogs, I'd, I'd probably still get a corn dog. I'm really easy. People are always like, what restaurant do you like? I'm like, listen, Taco Bell is number one in my heart. And Jack in the Box 99-cent tacos are number two. I know they're not real meat, but I'm going to tell you, but it's amazing. However they make it, it's incredible. I know it's more grease than anything. I like it. But there are some things that they can change, and all of a sudden we'd be like, you know what? I'm going to go on and pass this exit by and go somewhere else. But it can't be like that when it comes to living for God. Well, I don't like the new songs. I like, the, I like all of them that lift up Jesus. Now, granted, I don't like them when we sing 16 things back to back to back to back to back to back. Then I feel like they're just trying to make fun of me not having a good memory and trying to make sure I remember it. They're like, well, we don't have songbooks. If we'll sing this 24 times in a row, I think they'll start remembering. I'm sorry. I'm I'm getting off track. 7-Eleven songs. But you know what? It don't matter. I enjoy singing them as long as they lift up Jesus. It don't matter. It, it, there ain't nothing going to keep me away. Well, I like these colors. I do. But you know what? If someone comes and I live long enough and someone does it a different color, it won't be the reason I'm here. 
If somebody treats me bad, if somebody, man, they, they, they didn't do this and they said something ugly to me, you know what, it may hurt my feelings, but it's not going to cost me my walk with God. There are some things when it comes to living for God, it's not going to be the same as anywhere else. Whether it gets tough, whether it gets hard, whatever it is, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live a life that's pleasing to God. It don't have to be my way. It don't have to go my way all the time. There are some things I have made up my mind. I've made my decision. I'm going to live my life for Him no matter what. You know what I wish you'd do this morning? If you'll stand with me. How many times have we been here? It's the same every single year. We're going to close out the year. We're going to, I don't know, what's the typical? I think a lot of them. We're going to have a bonfire. We're going to write everything that we regret. We're going to write it on paper, throw it in the fire, signifying that it's done. And then make up a new excuse in a week why it's still hanging around. Like, well, maybe my, I guess my paper didn't burn up all the way. I don't know. Because the stuff I threw in that fire is alive and well. It's going to take more than a fancy bonfire and one night at an altar to get everything out. It's going to take a made-up mind. And I'm going to have to put some things in to fill the void of what God took out. What we ought to do this year is say, you know what? Every year I ask God to do something new. Every year I've asked God to take this. But this year I'm going to make up my mind. You know what? I want a different result this year. I really do want this to be the year where I go to a place I've never been in with God. I want this to be the year where I begin to recognize His voice like I've never known it before. I want this to be the year where I know that my walk with God is growing, not because the outside just looks okay, but because the inside of me, there's a sensitivity that I've never known. There's a place that God's taken me I've never been. And the only way that's going to happen is that I start putting some things in that I've never done. There's some priorities that are going to start becoming a part of my life. I've never made it a priority to get up early for, for prayer, but I'm going to start doing it. I'm not, not just setting the uh, snooze button and say I gave it a try, but getting up and finding a place where I talk to God, making prayer a part of every day of my life. I Get you a 90-day Bible reading plan. Get you a year Bible reading plan. Whatever you can do. But I'm going to start putting the Word into my heart like I never have before. I'm going to start spending time reaching for others. I'm going to start spending time saying, God, what do you want to do? I don't want this to be like every other year. I want something to change. I've got the desire. i got a dream that God's given me. He's just been waiting on me to make a decision. Say, here I am. You know what the beauty is? It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter anything that you walked into this place with. Take it from somebody that ruined a lot of good opportunities. Thought, God, God don't want nothing I got to offer. I says, listen, it's not about how messed up the pieces are. Just let me have them. We worked on a puzzle the other day. Man, it should have been a nice puzzle. But somehow, in the middle of all of it, I guess with 18 grandkids hanging around, it was a possibility. There were about three or four pieces. You know, they're never on the outside. They're always right in the middle when they go missing we turn that house over why because we spent six hours working on the thing and regardless of how much time we put in regardless of what it could have looked like because of four little pieces missing the thing did not look like what it's supposed to look like let me tell you what you got to do you just going to have to realize there's some pieces in my life that aren't as pretty as some other pieces There's some memories, they're not good memories. There's some decisions that weren't good decisions. That's all right. God just wants all of them. He said, give me the parts you're proud of. Give me the parts of your life you're not proud of. You just give me everything and don't worry about the rest. Give me all of it. 
Some of us wonder, how come God can't heal me? Because you give him all the good, but you hadn't released all the pain. You hadn't let him have the bitterness. You hadn't let him have what happened when somebody walked out on you, when somebody said some hurtful words, when somebody did something. You know, that I'm not going to turn that loose. God said, no, 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 no. The only way I can make your life what I created it to be is you got to let me have everything. Let me have all of it. I promise you there's nothing in your life he's afraid of. I'm starting off this year giving him everything. Holding nothing back. Everything I have, God, here it is. All of my reasons, all my excuses, all the things that I've held on to, whatever. Whatever. God, I'm giving you everything. And I'm making up my mind today. I choose you. You would think that'd be an easy choice, but it's really not. Moses stands before the people and he says, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. What kind of decision is that? Um, I'll take life and blessing. And uh, I think that'll be all. Thank you very much. But our nature... It gets hung up on stuff we don't even need. He says, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. And he has to reiterate to these people what to choose. He says, choose life. Choose him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days. Because he realized how easy it is for us to get hung up on everything other than him. What are you telling me? I'm telling you, choose him. Choose him. Above everything else in your life, choose Him. Put Him before everything. Put Him before everybody. And I promise you, I promise you, you'll never regret it. I wonder if there's anybody this morning that said, you know what, that's what I want to do this year. I know this probably seems like your typical first Sunday of the year. That don't make it wrong. I wonder how many say, you know what, yes, today. Today, I want to give Him everything. I've been holding some things back. I've, I've been giving myself a pat on the back because everything looks all right on the outside. But, Pastor, if I'm honest, there's some things that I've never surrendered. There's some things that I've never really went after because I felt pretty good because I was doing better than so-and-so. But, God, God, I want everything that you have for me this year. Does anybody want that? These altars are open. You can come up to this altar. You can pray where you are. But I wonder if there's anybody in this place say, you know what? This year is going to be different. It's not going to be like every year that I've ever had. It's not going to be the same results. I want something to change in my life like never before. I want God to do something that he's never done before in my life. I want God to heal some things that I've been carrying around far too long. I'm ready for God to do some things in my family that I've almost given up on. But God, this year, I'm not holding anything back. This year, I'm putting everything in your hands. This year, I surrender everything. This year, God, I'm not holding anything back from you, but I'm putting everything in your hands. God, I choose you. I'm making my decision this morning. It's not going to be like it's always been. It's not going to be back and forth, in and out, back and forth, all same old, same old like it's been every other year. This year it's going to be different because this year, today, God, I give you everything. I give you everything. I can't go back. I cannot go back.
asking us today to go to work on ourselves. Now, we don't mind working on other people. You know, I mean, that, I could ask anybody in here, be like, listen, do you, you know, that sermon, do you think that was for anybody? We're like, you know what? I'll tell you who needed it right over there. I was watching them all during service, see how they were. That's easy for us. We live in a generation that doesn't want that. And I, I, listen, I don't believe it exists, but a part of me wish it was. You know, they tell you, would you like to take two pills and never exercise? And would you like to lose 80 pounds in one month? Yes, yes, I would. I don't believe it. But yeah, that'd be amazing. Would you like to read this? I got a book the other day. It was called, uh, it was a book on willpower. I opened up the book and started reading it. It's stick figures written in comic book form. In the very beginning, it says, if you're buying a book on willpower, we figured we'd better make it easy to read it. <laughs> but that's the world we live in. And, 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 and I live in it. We want to drive through the gas station, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to get out to wash the car. That takes time. I just want to drive through, let something wash it for me. I, and we, we want this. We want fast food. We want this. We want that. We want it all right now. I, want, I don't want to exercise, but I want to lose weight. I understand. I live in that world. I don't know that it works in any other part of your life, but I'll tell you a place it definitely doesn't work. And that's when it comes to my walk with God. It doesn't happen automatic. I have to make up my mind. This is what I want to do. So all over this place, I'd like us to make a commitment to God before we leave here. Say, God, I want you to help me work on me this year. God, I want you to show me anything in me that needs to be worked on. God, it don't matter how it doesn't matter how I compare to anybody else. God, if you see anything in me, God, would you bring it to mind and would you help me to have a right spirit so that I can get everything out of me that would keep me from doing your will and from being who you've called me to be? Because I've been really generous with myself. I can give I give myself lots of time and grace. And the fact is, I'm still here. And I've been here a long time. And I should have been a lot further down the road. I should have been doing something for your kingdom. I should have had a whole lot different prayer life. I should have been a lot more faithful. But I've given myself every excuse I wanted to stay here. But I can't stay here anymore. Heaven is on the horizon. Eternity is within view. And I've got to get to where you called me to be. Can we lift our hands? Can that be your prayer this morning? Lord, search us this morning. God, as we leave this place, God, would you search my heart? Would you search my mind? God, anything that I've allowed to remain in my life, anything I've refused to address, anything I've refused to surrender to you, God, I've got to get where you've called me to be. God, I've got to be ready for you. I've got to be what you've called me to be. I've got to do what you've called me to do. Help me, Lord. Help me today to get out of my own way and to be what you called me to be. Give me the strength to surrender it all to you. Give me the strength, God, to stay faithful. The strength to push forward, to be and do all that you have called us to be and all that you have called us to do. We can't do it without you, but through you, we can do all things. Help us today. Strengthen us today. We can only do it through you we need you and we ask for your help today lord go with us as we leave this place lead us and guide us order our steps i ask that you would touch every life in this place every person watching or listening online let today be a day that we can look back on for the rest of our lives and say that's the day everything changed that's the day that my life changed forever in your precious name, Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen, amen. If you see somebody you don't know, let them know you love them. Let them know we're so thankful they're here with us this morning. God bless you, each and every one of you. Please, 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 5.30 tonight, 5.30 tonight, prayer in the prayer room or the, the fellowship hall to my left and your right, meeting at 5.30 in here at 6 o'clock, and we will be having communion this evening. 
Amen. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you this evening. God bless you. You're dismissed.